Hello everyone, it's me and INFP and welcome to my new series, Demonstrating MBTI Couples Through Film. When searching for concrete examples of what certain MBTI types are like in a relationship, I find it helpful to go to film and see fictional depictions of these types in relationships. It helps me understand them better. Even though everything might not be quite as like it would be in a real relationship, I think it gives a good idea and helps you by giving like visuals of some of the pros, cons, conflicts, chemistry, and stuff like that. The couple we're looking at today is the ENTP male and INFP female couple. If there are other MBTI couple examples you'd like to see, write them in the comments below. ENTP and INFP couples aren't the most common pairing you see. And there are several reasons for this. ENTPs and INFPs are quite different from each other. Good grief! You know how to try one's patience, don't you? And their differences might not help their similarities gel together. The movie characters serving as examples of this pairing are Anne Shirley and Gilbert Blythe. From the beloved film, the 1985 Anne of Green Gables, and its sequel, the 1985 Anne of Avonlea. Anne is one of the most famous fictional INFPs in the fictional world. She leads with FI, introverted feeling, followed by NE, extroverted intuition. She's full of wonder and passion. She feels a range of deep emotions, and she possesses a huge imagination and is very idealistic. She strives to be herself and wins people over with her genuineness. She's also a prime example of an INFP on the more extroverted scale. Her personality works with ENTP Gilbert because she is a more talkative INFP without shyness or anxiety, proving that not all INFPs are quiet. Another reason that she is able to work with ENTP is because she is a four-wing three Enneagram. The three wing is more extroverted, image driven, and ambitious than the five wing. She's not afraid to get into conflict, give Gilbert back what he gives her, and has a competitive nature that strives to be successful at what she deems meaningful. If Anne was a more delicate and shy INFP, she likely wouldn't have been able to endure very well the brutally logical ways of the ENTP. Gilbert seems to be an unusually soft ENTP with well-developed FE, extroverted feeling. ENTPs with well-developed FE are more empathetic, kind, and mature than typical ENTPs, and their feelings come out a little bit more. It makes sense to me that Gilbert is an ENTP. In the film, we only see him when he's interacting with Anne, and don't get as much personality time with him as we do her. Gilbert is pictured as the guy all the girls like in school before Anne comes along. He's smart, teasing, and handsome. And he's never had trouble getting a girl's attention. Until Anne. The reason his interest was piqued by Anne was largely because she was a challenge to him. Andy P's like challenges. He expected her to fall for his wink like any other girl. But instead, he got more than he bargained for when she reacted in a fiery way and then ignored him. She also stood out to him because she was different. Gilbert loves her weirdness. Anne Shirley. What the heck are you doing? As an INFP, she was intelligent, imaginative, and full of life. There was something about her that stood out to him among all the other girls. She pushed him to strive harder at school because their intelligence was equally matched. He says in the film that being smart is more valuable to him than being pretty. If he was an ENTP without FE development, he might have lost interest in Anne because of her intense and turbulent emotions and might not have been as willing to be patient for the return of her affections. From nearly the beginning, there is competitiveness between them, spurred by Anne's unforgiveness towards his teasing about her hair. They rival each other for first place in school, and when they finally become friends, the playful daring of their relationship remains. They have a very intellectually stimulating relationship, full of fun and still that rivalry you can see. They connect on their NE, 
their intellectual discussions, their fun romps. They make good friends, although misunderstandings still abound. Gilbert's teasing continues, but in a way to feed his own romantic agenda. I think you're old enough to make up your own mind, Anne. I've always been old enough to make up my own mind. Very well then, Gilbert. I'd be pleased to accept your invitation. He's unabashed in showing his support for her ambitions and talents. Antipes tend to admire growth. One thing to point out is their maturity level was different in the film. Gilbert is 16 when they meet, and Anne is only around 13. The functions develop more as you get older, so it's understandable Anne was struggling a lot with her dominant function, F.I. Gilbert knows what he wants as an ENTP soon on and pursues INFP Anne over a long period of time, even after she ignores him for years and runs away from his feelings for her. Anne takes a lot longer to realize she's in hardcore denial about her feelings for him. Anne dares him to change her. Why do people have to grow up? Marry? Change? Oh, you change. If someone ever admitted that they were head over heels for you, you'd be swept off your feet in a moment. I would not. And I defy anyone who would try and make me change. You do. And the face of an ENTP accepting a love challenge looks a lot like this. Something that is true about ENTPs is that they can flirt all day long, but they don't fall in love easily. When they do, they fall hard. This is my favorite meme of them. <laughs> demonstrating the stubbornness of the INFP and the persistentness of the ENTP. INFP and ENTP have a lot of misunderstandings along the way because of how differently they operate and a lack of communication. But in the end, they are mind mates for each other. Kindred spirits. Out of all the scenes in the films, this scene always stands out to me as the best example of ENTP and INFP couples' dynamics, as well as the struggle they can have because of the different ways they work. I love my story, and I wrote it out of the best that was in me. INFP leads with feeling, while ENTP is logical. You're just the first person in Pokey Old Avonlea to try anything like that. All pioneers are considered to be afflicted with moonstruck madness. Mad to think I could write anything better than a baking powder advertisement. This has dampened any spark of ambition. I shall never write another story again. Well, I wouldn't give up altogether. Maybe if you just let your character speak everyday English, instead of all that highfalutin mumbo-jumbo. You think my story's full of faults too, don't you? He's trying to show that he cares for her by giving blunt honesty and advice. Wilt thou give up that garter, O fairest of the fair? <laughs> and nobody speaks that way. And look at that sad Percival who sits around mooning the entire time. He never lets a girl get a word in edgewise. In real life, she'd have pitched him. His poetry would win any girl's heart. But when Ein of Peas creates something such as a story, it becomes a part of them. So if the story is being criticized, it's like they are being criticized. INFPs tend to be easily offended, while ENTPs often unintentionally offend. Well, if you want my opinion, Miss Shirley, I'd write about places I knew something of and people that spoke everyday English, instead of these silly schoolgirl romances. I don't share your opinion. I am not your horse, Mr. Blythe. I was just trying to give you a bit of friendly advice. Is that so? Take the hundred dollars and write a real story about the people you care about. Well, you certainly wouldn't be one of them. Pitching and mooning? Well, you can cry and feel sorry for yourself all you want, but it won't help you write a better novel. Will you still come to Fred's clam bake with me next Tuesday? Listen, Anne, I'm sorry. Will you let me walk you back? I was just trying to be helpful. You, you know you get my back up sometimes. Listen, I'm sorry. What else can I do? Let me get a word in edgewise once in a while before I pitch you! 
This scene hits home especially for the ENTP and INFP relationship because it shows how the ENTP's intentions were good, but it ended up hurting the INFP unintentionally because sometimes INFPs have a problem with blunt honesty and logic problem solving when they're seeking validation for their feelings instead. He was trying to help her write a better book and she just took offense to his suggestions. <laughs> and you can see they do have chemistry, but it can be very volatile. And sometimes ENTPs don't understand when INFPs get sensitive and upset and start crying like in this scene. And believe it or not, sometimes INFPs need blunt honesty. She may not have admitted it in this scene, but I believe she was some of that advice sunk into her later on. And through the films, we see them grow and mature, and they both give a little. Anne becomes less idealistic, and Gilbert tries to become more understanding. Anne was still very idealistic here, and she was feeling disillusioned, which happens to INFPs when their idealistic version of what they imagine life to be like doesn't measure up. Part of why she put off admitting her feelings for Gilbert for so long was because she was set on a di this idealistic version of who her partner would be, and he did not fit that version. But in the book, she says that when she was imagining her life in the future, she was trying to imagine some like dark, heroic, melancholy hero, but somehow Gilbert was there helping her with like day-to-day -day things. So he was always in her heart. She just didn't want to admit it. But yeah, this is a great couple. I recommend you watch the films. It's a very iconic series. They are in fact mind mates. Their intelligence plays off each other, and they have a lot of fun together with their NE. They connect really well. They also fight a lot, but in time and maturity, I'm sure, and communication, that will improve. Overall, the INFP and ENTP couple have a playful, intuitive, intelligent relationship together. Thank you for watching this. Please let me know if you liked it. Gently push the subscribe button. Comment on any other couples that you would like to see in film, if you even have specific suggestions for film characters, and I will see you next time.